Welcome back. It is the Arvo Flow Sports Hour here on Flow FM. And joining me now is our North American sports expert to talk about what's happening in the weird world of sports. Eddie Dads, great to be with you again. How are you? I'm um, great. Thank you, Ellis. Thank you for having me on. Eddie Dads beaming into us from Vancouver, the contributor at scplaybook.com.au. Eddie, we're starting off with a weird sports story. We're talking about the Olympian Lawrence Akoi. He was a big deal back in the 2012 Games in London, but uh, he's making news for vastly different reasons now. Yeah, Alex, this is a weird one. He sent me through this this morning, and I've, I've been researching it ever since. Um, he put up a photo of basically what looks like his leg as like a bit of Play-Doh. Like he sort of had pushed thumbprints into his leg um, and could still see the thumbprints after he took the thumb off. It was a very, very strange picture. Um, it, uh, it turns out that he actually had cellulitis, apparently. So this, this is a very bizarre thing. I mean... What did you think when you first saw the picture of his leg? It looked pretty weird, didn't it? I mean, I'm not going to say it was a, an overly charming picture, Eddie, but um, this is just a, a very rare situation to uh, affect an athlete, you would think, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely. I think cellulitis might be a little bit more common than we think out there, but I've ne- definitely never seen it to this extent. I mean, I hope he got, when he got immediately checked out after, after posting that photo online. Um, apparently, it's also some sort of fluid build up in his leg as well. So, not, not the uh, not the nicest uh, picture to be sent through by you this morning. But um, I did do my research and had a look into it, and um, it does seem like he's going to be okay. So that's uh, that's good for everyone involved. Yeah, and just for the benefit of the listeners, so we're talking about a picture where he's basically pressing into his lo- lower part of his leg, and it hasn't appeared to basically go back to normal. So he had a pretty multifaceted career, Eddie. He's gone from being an Olympian to playing in the NFL as well. Yeah, I mean, quite the amazing career, Ellis. The, uh, the first page of his Wikipedia is a, is a journey, let me tell you. He was a British track and field athlete and uh, former American tackle with the San Francisco 49ers. Um, also played rugby, uh, won a medal in discus at the European Championships. I mean, this guy, this guy's pretty incredible. Um, I need to know a bit more about him. He, he looks like an absolute specimen. Um, so it turns out he can do the discus, he can play rugby, and he can play American football too. So pretty crazy guy. Certainly sounds that way. Let's park that one. We'll talk about the Australian cricket team, Eddie, and the loss to India. Well, they're getting absolutely baked in the fallout. And uh, as Wayne Phillips put it on the morning show this morning, climate change, Cummins needs to have the captaincy removed from him based on his performance, that is. I don't know what you make of that, Eddie. Wow, that's a, that's a huge call. Um, I, de- I definitely am not in that camp. I think uh, it's been two very bad test matches for Australia and for Pat Cummins, but um, I do think that he has the uh, the runs on the board in a, in a sense he's taken a lot of wickets and has been a great captain in the past 12 months. I don't know if you watched the, the test documentary on Amazon Ellis, but um, he was an absolute highlight in that. He seems like a very smart, clever guy. So definitely, I'm definitely not questioning Cummins. I am questioning the, the game strategy that they decided to basically to sweep everything the Indians bowled at them. Um, on a day three wicket that was bouncing and jumping around everywhere, that balls were keeping low. Um, it was not a smart decision, and they were very, very badly exposed by it. So, um, I do think I do think there does need to be a uh, a look into what exactly occurred here, how we ended up with that terrible strategy, why we weren't able to um, adapt on the fly to get out of it. Um, that's now two really, really dispiriting test losses, um, and a series that we thought we could win, uh, we're now not going to win, and we might get stitched up four nil, um, which would be an absolute disaster. So. Something needs to change pretty quickly. So is the overall balance of the commentary that we're getting from both the Australian and Indian side of things warranted in your opinion? It really was that bad? Um, I don't think it's quite as hysterical as some of the, especially some of the Indian publications made it out to be. It wasn't that bad. Um, it's, we were in the test match up until the final session. Like we outscored India in the first innings. Um, our bowlers looked really good. Uh, we found something in Todd Murphy. Nathan Lyon was brilliant. Uh, it was just, it, I think it's more about the fact that, um, trying to play cricket in India is very different than trying to play cricket in Australia. Um, and one thing that you don't learn how to do in Australia is sweep the ball that's spinning on a very turning deck. So we don't really know how to do that. We don't know how to play that way, but for some reason we decided, um, we'd be good enough to play that way, uh, and got exposed. Yeah, I think that's a, a very fair summation, Eddie. We'll come back to home matters. The NRL, it's nearly in full swing, still in our preseason. But uh, the preseason challenge over in Christchurch, is this just a way to uh, further expose the NRL's uh, international footprint here, Eddie? Obviously, we know New Zealand has a, uh, a very strong rugby league appetite. But uh, just tell us more about the preseason challenge for some of those listeners that might not be aware of the fact that 
the NRL still actually has a preseason sort of trophy, which the AFL no longer does have? Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, I think what they're trying to basically bring back, Ellis, is what the AFL had back in the sort of the 90s, where you'd have the, the day premiership and the night premiership, which is the preseason game, uh, the preseason flag that they had. And it's actually considered quite a big deal back then. Um, if you if you won the preseason flag, uh, that was actually reasonably prestigious. So um, I think that's what the NRL are trying to do here with, with this challenge. Um, Warriors, uh, obviously the New Zealand home team, were playing in Christchurch. Uh, I think from broadly reading from some of the comments, John Lando are being cheered on by probably 99% of the rugby league population. I don't think anyone wants to see the Storm win anything else. Um, but unfortunately, they weren't quite good enough. But yeah, I really like the initiative. I mean, um, there's a $100,000 prize on offer for winning this preseason cup, which uh, I think is what you, you kind of have to do in these situations to get players and clubs interested in these preseason um, or even the All Star game sort of format, which, which is on in the NBA at the moment. You have to sort of incentivize financially. So I think it's a smart idea. And I'm, I, 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 for one, I've been thinking about rugby league at an earlier time of the season than I previously would have. And just structurally, Eddie, uh, I'm keeping in mind a lot of listeners that we might have who are from AFL towns and not NRL towns, so to speak. Structurally, the league is different in that it's governed, obviously, by the governing body, but it's not owned by the league itself. It's privately owned, the clubs, aren't they? So they're not franchises that are kept in-house like the AFL, and thus you get prize money in this circumstance. Yeah, that's exactly right, Ellis. Um, it is very different structure to the AFL. Um, I don't have uh, I don't have half an hour on this call to explain to you all the differences. There's, there's, there's a host of uh, very interesting um, uh, contrast in the way the AFL and the NRL were set up um, originally. Um, but yeah, the clubs are definitely more sole entities in rugby league. Um, they do operate uh, yeah quite independently to the league at times, whereas in the AFL there is the governing body. Um, but yeah, I think NRL, as we talked about last week, Peter Volandi's um, is probably the best sports executive in the country and um, he does seem to be uh, getting the sport to go from strength to strength. Their TV numbers are always unreal. Um, I can't wait for the season. Well, you just spoke about the AFL there and uh, we're not far away from the season starting. Uh, A lot of analytical pieces and promotional pieces coming out about uh, how certain sides might be lining up in 2023. What's your read on who the top sides will be and uh, what some of the names are that we should keep a lookout for in 2023 who might have flown under the radar in past seasons, Eddie? Um, it's going to be a really even match season, I think, Ellis. I think um, Geelong, obviously, uh, are going to be right there again. They basically um, they seem to be able to replenish their list on the fly at all times. Um, they picked up Jack Bowes and Ollie Henry from Collingwood. So those are two really good young players that are going to sort of immediately step in. I think they'll be really good again. Um, I'm excited to see Patrick Dangerfield playing more as a forward um, for Geelong this year. I think he, he could he has the potential to kick sort of 40, 50 goals as a forward if he's, if he's a stay-at-home sort of half-forward forward pocket. So really excited to see that. I think Richmond are going to be fantastic as well. They've uh, obviously beefed up bringing in Jacob Hopper and Tim Taranto um, from DWS. Uh, so they're going to be really exciting to watch. I think one of the un- under-the-radar teams for me, Ellis, is, uh, is Port Adelaide, actually. I think everyone's sort of written Port Adelaide off. There's uh, people bagging Ken Hinckley online saying he's achieved nothing with this list. Um, I think they're actually, their list is still in a really, really good spot. And I wouldn't be surprised to see them um, up in the top four. But to start this season, Connor Rosie and Zach Butters are two absolute jets. Uh, so very excited for that. And one more player that I think is going to, uh, not surprise a lot of people this year, but uh, it's just going to reinforce how good he actually is, is uh, Nick Dacos at Collingwood. By all accounts, uh, the rising star from last year is absolutely dominating through the midfield, kicking goals. Uh, he's sort of moving away from that cheap half-back role he had last year. So he's one to watch for me, Ellis. I think um, he's one of the best young players we've seen come through in a long, long time. Well, Ricky Lambert wants to get your thoughts on when Geelong are going to announce Patrick Dangerfield as their new captain. So uh, when can we expect that, Eddie? We keep riding into them and there's no announcement pending yet. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, I I haven't heard too much about that. We've obviously seen quite a lot of uh, interesting captain choices uh, the last few weeks in the AFL. I thought for Jordan Dawson, Captaincy at the Crows was uh, was quite bizarre. I mean, he's, he's a brilliant player, but I couldn't believe they named him captain. You know, twelve months after he arrived at the club. Um, and then some other really like James Sicily at Hawthorne um, is, is great. I love that Darcy Moore at Collingwood. Um, I think yeah, clubs are starting to wise up with, uh, with their leadership and sort of pick that you know the, the quietest, the more quieter guys are starting to come through. Um, and uh, it's really exciting. Toby Green at GWS. 
I mean, what a win for him. He's uh, he's been every sort of you know up and down in his AFL career has been huge, and uh, to be named GWS, GWS captain is, is pretty amazing for him too. There we go. Well, before we do let you go, Eddie, scplaybook.com.au, when can we expect that editorial gear change to uh, gear us more towards the AFL side of things, Eddie? Oh, we flipped the switch, Ellis. It's absolutely go, 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 NRL and AFL stuff at the moment. Um, podcast going up daily over on the NRL side of things. We've got the weekly AFL podcast uh, on the AFL side of things. So uh, it's pretty exciting. Um, got a lot of lot of talented people on board this year. Um, a few of the contributors on the AFL side of things are absolute geniuses. So if you, if you need any help with your super coach, um, jump over to scplaybook.com.au. Eddie Dads from scplaybook.com.au beaming into us from Vancouver in Canada. Always great to catch up with you, Eddie. Have a very good week and we'll do it all again next week. Thanks, Alice. Speak to you soon.